Hi folks, I had a request for a couple of interesting factoring questions. So let's take a look at uh, a couple here. I'll start off with this first one and I want to try to factor this fully. Uh, so I need to try to find some patterns and uh, the first thing that comes to me right away is a squared minus b squared, a difference of squares. So I know that this factors to a plus b times a minus b. Problem is, is that I'm not quite sure what I would do with this minus 6a plus 9. I don't think I could really make it relate to that factorization. So I'm going to look for another pattern. And I have the a squared and the minus 6a. And well, if I take that along with the plus 9, I can form a trinomial. Maybe I can factor that there. So let's try that. Let's rearrange things here. So a squared minus 6a plus 9. Okay, and then minus b squared. Take care of that later on. And let's see if we can factor this. Are there two numbers that multiply to 9 and add up to negative 6? Well, we've got negative 3 and negative 3. So I can factor this first part as a minus 3 times a minus 3 and then minus b squared. And this, in fact, is itself a perfect square. a minus 3 all squared minus b squared. Okay. And at this point here, we should be starting to recognize these types of scenarios. We see the difference of two expressions, and each of the expressions is a perfect square. So that's a difference of squares. Okay, And that factors to the first plus the second times the first minus the second. So in other words, a minus 3 plus b times a minus 3 minus b. And there you have it. We factored it. Now, normally by convention, we'd like to have the variables in the front, so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to rearrange each bracket. I'll have a plus b minus 3 times a minus b minus 3. Okay, there you have it, factorization of this expression here. And it was, again, figuring out a pattern, and in, partic in particular, a pattern that was useful. And here it was about noticing the trinomial that we could form. And then, of course, from here, noticing that we had a difference of squares. Good. Let's move on to the next one here. And this one's got significantly more terms in it uh, and lots more possibilities. So let's uh, start thinking about what these possibilities might be. So I notice here I've got uh, an x squared, a 4x, 2xy. They all have a common factor of x. But this 2xy also has a factor of y which could go with these other two terms. So I'm not quite sure which one I would choose, so uh, I'll let it go for now. Uh, I notice the last four terms all have a common factor of 2. Um, again, if I factored out of 2, I'm not quite sure where that would take me. So I need to think a little more about this. And um, similar to what we saw above, I think I can create a trinomial here. I see the x squared and the y squared and then a 2xy. That could be the middle term for the trinomial. So let's give that a try. So x squared, and I'll just put this in the middle just to make it more uh, familiar. And then we'll just leave the rest, see if we can figure something out later on. Okay, so I look at this here, and I hopefully no notice that it's uh, the expansion of a perfect square, because I have the square of one term, square of another, and then twice the product of those two. So we recognize that as just being x plus y all squared. Looking at just the first three terms. Hopefully now I notice that, well wait a minute, if I look at these two terms and I factor out a 4, Lo and behold, I just end up with an x plus y, and then plus 4. And so what I've just created is a trinomial, okay, something squared plus 4 times that something, then plus 4. So what I'm going to do is just treat this as a regular trinomial and do what I normally do. Look for two numbers that multiply to 4 and add up to 4. And in this case here, well, that's just 2 and 2. So I would have x plus y instead of just x plus 2. 
and then again x plus y instead of just x plus 2 again and in fact this is itself a perfect square so x plus y plus 2 all squared okay and again if we look back it was determining what possible scenarios I might have and trying to use the one that seemed most logical that seemed most useful in this case here it was taking these three terms to create a trinomial which we could factor then noticing the pattern of the x plus y and here if we factored out the 4 we'd get another x plus y and then noticing that this could be treated as a trinomial hence factored as a trinomial okay there you go two nice interesting factoring questions